Good morning. We welcome you to worship here today on this Palm Sunday, and we begin our worship service uh, with our invocation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you at this time, if you have uh, put your, uh, your greens on your front door as part of our Palm Sunday celebration, that you might go ahead and put those pictures in the comments uh, for our worship service today, that we might be in solidarity with one another and worship together in that way as we do our blessing of the palms. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along this way. Bless these branches and those who carry them and those who post them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the, in name, the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
So to any of the children who are here and watching the worship service with your parents, welcome. I'm so glad that you're a part of this. Um, I would like to make a particular invitation to you, though adults are welcome to join if you so choose. Um, usually on Palm Sunday, one of my favorite things is to make palm crosses. And so you take a palm branch and you fold it and you make it into um, the image of a cross, which I just think is really fun. Um, and it also reminds us that, uh, that at the end of this week, Jesus will die on the cross and that come Easter morning, the cross will be empty and Jesus will rise. And so the cross is at the center of everything that we do this week. In fact, it's it's at the center of everything that we do as Christians always, but especially this week that we call holy. And so we don't have palm branches that we can give out um, because of the situation that we're in and trying to keep everyone healthy. And so what I would particularly invite you to do is to go outside after the worship service is over, go outside and find anything that you can um, so leaves or blades of grass or daffodils, if there are daffodils blooming in your neighborhood, and um, to take them and bring them home and to make them into a cross that it might remind you throughout this week why it is that this week is Holy Week, because Jesus has died for our sake and that we are invited to worship him always because of what he has done for us. And so I invite you to make your cross and then to post it um, in the comments. So after the worship service is done and you've made it, go ahead and take a picture of it and then have your parents post it in the comments so that we can, uh, so that we can continue to remind each other that this week is holy, even if it's a little different or really different than we're used to. And now I invite you to pray with me. Please repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you, Thank you for your son, for your son who, died on the cross, who died on the cross that we might, that we might share, your love. share your love. Help us, Help us to keep centered, to keep centered on, the cross, on the cross all week long. All week long. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now we'll sing Jesus Loves Me. again to our Palm Sunday worship service. Uh, I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you all as we uh, enter into this Holy Week together. Uh, first of all, on Thursday we will have a, 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 a Monday Thursday service. It will be at 7 o'clock, but this Monday Thursday again is a little different, uh, so we cannot gather here in this worship space and, um, and have a meal together and wash one another's feet, which I know some people will be quite all right with. Um, but instead, we will each be gathering in our homes. And so I would ask you to consider this week um, gathering for a meal. Whoever is living in your home right now, gather for a meal at 6 p.m. Now, I know this is not possible for everyone, but consider doing that uh, whenever you're going to watch the worship service, even if it's later, to have a meal first together. And then uh, throughout the service, you will be invited. Um, you'll be invited to um, share in that time together. And so, even if you don't have anyone living with you, if you're living alone, I invite you, as one of our members suggested, who lives alone, instead gathering um, gathering together the pictures of those who are most important in your life, um, those who uh, who have raised you in faith or who, whom you dearly love. Take their pictures and put them at the table with you that you might draw upon their witness as you worship and as you eat um, for this night. 
on Monday, Thursday. And then you'll be invited during the worship service at one point to go and wash your hands. And if you are gathered with others, to wash one another's hands. And you will also be invited to, um, to have a drink with you and to raise a glass. Because when Jesus ate with his disciples, it says that again after supper he took the cup. And they drank together. Um, they drank to their shared mission and how God had placed them in this world to be God's people. And so I invite you to have a drink on hand, any drink that is your choice. Uh, it will not be communion, but it will be the community of faith gathered in that way. And then I also will invite you uh, during that worship service to um, put away all religious decoration that you have in your home. So to take some time during the service when we would normally strip the altar, when we would make it bare for our Good Friday service, I invite you instead to, to clear away the religious symbols and the symbols of Easter that you may have up in your home already, to put them away or to cover them up, and then, uh, and then you'll put them out again on Saturday night in preparation for Easter morning. And then our Monday Thursday service, uh, once uh, we have concluded we are, what we are doing that night, the service will continue the next day at 7 p.m., our Good Friday Tenebrae service. And so we invite you to uh, tune into that at 7 p.m. Again, uh, it will be a tenebrae service, so we will have multiple voices participating and reading through the passion story um, as we sing through uh, the Lenten hymns that are so powerful and meaningful to us. And so I invite you to come and be a part of that. And then Easter Sunday, we will of course gather on Easter Sunday in the same way that we have um, at 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m., and now you can wear anything you want on Easter morning. No one will see you, um, except that I invite you, if, if you are up for it, to go ahead and put on your Easter best, to go ahead and dress up and wear your beautiful clothes and, and your colorful clothes and your hats if you have those, and then to take a picture and be ready on Sunday morning to, uh, to post a picture of your, your Easter finery that we might um, celebrate one another's presence in that way. And so we will continue to, to worship and to serve as we collect food and as we all do all the things that, that God has called us to do as God's people. But at this time we will turn to, uh, turn to our readings from <coughs> Scripture. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being human, excuse me, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Christ Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.
Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord has need for them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. that we uh, that we have just read that we read every Palm Sunday though a slightly different version uh, for each of three years in a row but I'm always so struck by it because I imagine that we are the crowd well I mean there are things that we do to represent us being the crowd we wave palm branches and we join the voice of the crowd that says Hosanna in the highest we are the crowd and then, of course, we often then embody the crowd five days later uh, on Good Friday when we uh, join the voice of the crowd saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! We are the crowd. I know we are quick to complain about people acting ridiculous these days. There's plenty of it going on, of course. And at the same time, we are eager to praise those working every day to make this situation we're all in better. But we are all in this together. And so for better or worse, we are all the crowd. We are the people who buy and deliver groceries for parents, neighbors, and strangers alike. We are the people who buy more than we need <laughs> out of a fear of not having enough and a distrust of our political leaders that we're not sure they have a handle on things once the crisis really hits. We are the people who spend our newly discovered time at home making masks so that there are enough to go around. We are the people who spend way too much time on social media sharing words of hate 
for anyone who we disagree with. We are the crowd. The Palm Sunday crowd and the Good Friday crowd. The Hosanna crowd and the Crucify Him crowd. And what's difficult is that that potential of either side of that lives in all of us every day, in every moment. In fact, I think that in this moment of uncertainty and fear, that those emotions of either cheering on and being excited or being angry and frustrated are just so much closer to the surface than they are when our life is as, it, as we are used to. Who knows which we will be in any given moment, based on, I don't know, how we slept the night before, <laughs> how anxious we are feeling, what we've seen come across the news, an argument that we had with those that we are stuck in the same house with. Why can we not break free from our selfishness, from our fear, from the sin that brings out the worst in us? Why can we not live the best version of ourselves every day, especially knowing how difficult it is for everyone? And especially knowing that right now the people we hurt most are those we love most, those we live with and near. No, it's hard to figure out what version of the crowd we are each given day. You know why I really want to be in this story? I want to be Jesus. And not in a savior complex sort of way, to try to save the world from the hundreds of thousands of deaths that are forecast. No, I want to be like Jesus in that I, I want to be able to be calmly directive. You hear the words of Jesus today at the beginning of the gospel. Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey. He speaks with such authority and such calm, even though he's going to die, and he knows he's about to die. He knows that he is walking to his death, where he will be brutally killed. I want to be able to speak in the voice of Jesus that will say, this is how we will do this community thing in this time. This is how we will worship and make it meaningful for people. This is how we will make sure that all people have enough to eat. How we will stay home for the common good. How we will each teach and inspire children who can't be in school in this time. And do all of this even though our lives are all turned upside down. And truth be told, there are some people who are managing to be that voice in all the chaos these days. Some of our leaders are embodying this, despite the fact that no one can really know when this will end. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be humble like Jesus, the king who is coming to you humble, mounted on a donkey. I want to never have the urge to complain or blame, but simply serve, knowing that everyone is hurting. But the truth is, I am not Jesus. You are not Jesus. And yet, strangely, at the very same time, I am Jesus and you are Jesus. I am not the perfect Jesus, and you are not the perfect Jesus who is free from sin, always able to do the right thing for the right reason. We get frustrated and irritated, and it's okay. But at the same time, I am Jesus, and you are Jesus, the body of Christ, embodying the love of God in this world, imperfectly but beautifully. You do not have to be Jesus in every moment. It's okay to be human and to show your imperfections. That might even be an entry into that humility that Jesus bears so well. It's okay to get frustrated and to cry and to ask for help. But you also have the beautiful opportunity in these days to be Jesus. 
Most obviously, healthcare workers and those working in nursing homes and homeless shelters are Jesus every day, serving as Jesus served. But you can also be Jesus by staying at home and calling friends and family and neighbors and fellow church members just to check in. So yes, wave your palm branches or whatever greens you can find with that crowd and live into the cheering on hopeful version of the crowd. Lean out your window at 7 p.m. each night cheering for healthcare workers as we have seen across our world. But in the quiet moments, look for ways to bear Christ, humble and suffering, to a world that needs some hope. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 to take some time to share peace with those in your home and to share peace through your comments that you can post on this on this worship service Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. God of mercy, we celebrate Christ is with us as we remember his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Hold us in his glory as we make our th way through these stressful times. Remind us of our spiritual healing that awaits us on the last day. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, empower your church to carry on through these days. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and William, as they guide us in our ministry in the most unusual circumstances ever faced. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, we pray for the most vulnerable among us, especially for Harry and the residents of Avondale community, for Esther, Donna, Virginia, Donna, 
Joan, and all the other 8,000 people at Oak Crest, and for everyone in residence communities isolated from family and friends. So too, we remember those who cannot attend to final goodbyes, visitations, or funerals as they lose loved ones. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, bless our pastors as they continue to minister to your people, even under these restrictions. Bless our worship together so that it uplifts all those who listen. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, we ask your tender mercy on all those on our parish prayer list, those who are sick, including Tony and Carol, and those who we name now with voice through our typing in the comments or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, by your word, we are made and saved. We remember all whom have been called home to the saints at rest, including Esther, Holger, Bill, Denise, Robert, Bill, and Audrey. Bring us with them into your everlasting kingdom. Hear us, O God, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O God, Hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With confidence, let us join in song, praying as our Savior has taught us. you to uh, take some time to consider what you uh, can give to the ministry that we continue to share here at Epiphany. The church building is closed uh, for everyone's safety except for when we are giving food out of it um, and when we are recording these worship services, um, but the ministry is far from closed. Uh, the church is still 
living out its mission uh, to show God's love in word and deed. And so please be generous uh, when you are able. And I thank all the people who have uh, really gone out of their way to make sure that their offering come in. And a few who have been particularly generous, uh, knowing that there are others who simply are not able to give at this time. We are so grateful for all of your gifts, for the offerings of, of your regular offerings and the, uh, and the gifts you have made towards the feeding ministry that we are doing, and, uh, and also those who have taken the time to fill out that service interest form uh, that we might continue to witness to God's love. Um, and plan for when we can be back together again. And so as we listen to our offertory uh, by Marie here in a moment, I invite you to take advantage of the opportunity to mail in your offering uh, to make sure those are set to go to 4301 Rasp Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland 21206, or to use the uh, donate page link that's in the comments right now to give your offering online. And again, if that offering, if you would like to make an additional offering specifically for, uh, for our feeding ministry and for other ways that we are helping families through a difficult time, you can mark that in the other category as coronavirus response. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as a sacrifice for us all. With loving hearts, we return the gifts of our lives and labors as we bring our gifts and tithes in the morning offering. Mm -hmm. 